Hello, in this video, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate how you can link a SOLIDWORKS assembly with simulation tools to perform a CAD-enabled simulation or model-based simulation on the 3D Experience platform. And I'll also show you how you can go back and change SOLIDWORKS assembly parts and how it automatically propagates onto the simulation. So here I'm looking at a medical device, which um, I've already uploaded the assembly onto the platform and I'm bringing it back into SOLIDWORKS. And you can see this is a auto injector type of a device and we have, it has multiple parts uh, comprising the assembly. And now we're going to um, use this assembly and bring it automatically using the 3D Experience um, plugin onto the platform to set up your upstream simulation. So here I've already created the simulation ahead of time to save time. And this is a drop test simulation. And we're going to run the simulation quickly and show you how the results of this drop test looks like. Here you can see the simulation running, and then once you have the results, you can post-process the results on the 3D Experience platform. You can visualize one may see stresses, which is shown here. You can also visualize other things such as velocity vectors. You can also visualize displacements and so on and so forth. And here you can see in this current configuration, there's some failure that's happening due to the way the parts are assembled. So this is what we're going to do eventually. We're going to go back to our SOLIDWORKS model and we're going to make some changes to some one to a couple of parts um, and see if we can address this failure that you're seeing here. I also want to quickly show how you can um, visualize some of these results in a, in a lightweight sense, in the sense you can uh, use a simple web browser to generate these experience content and you can use the web browser to quickly look at simulations. So if you have a project manager who does not have access to the actual application, they can utilize these uh, web apps um, at the comfort of your browser and look at some of these results. So it's a nice and convenient way to, to showcase some of these results that you've seen in the application itself, but in a different environment, which is a lot more accessible. So now we're going back to SOLIDWORKS to make some of these geometric changes. Um, we're going to uh, change the, the diameter of a part and also the uh, extruded thickness to address, to, to, to make sure that we are able to address that failure that you saw. Essentially, the top and the bottom parts were kind of separating from each other. Um, that's because of the way uh, this particular um, part was, was created. So we're going to change the diameter of it to make it slightly thicker. And we're also going to extrude this part a little bit higher up so that it's able to uh, keep the, the, the two parts of the top and the bottom part of the, uh, <clears throat> this device together. So you can take a, you can see the view uh, in terms of how this modification changes the way it was from before and, and what it is now. So now what you can do is you can, again now now that you've made these changes, you automatically uh, update these parts. Once you update the part on the SolidWorks side of things, because it's connected um, with the 3D Experience platform, these updates are automatically propagated downstream to your to your simulation object. And so now you don't have to go back and redo anything. All you have to do is click simulate again, and it should uh, it, it will simulate based on the updated uh, assembly or part. So now you can uh, see once we run the simulation, we can take a look to see if uh, it addressed the failure that you saw. And uh, sure enough, uh, it looks like the, the parts are not separating based on the same drop test conditions.